in Palenque. The hotel we stayed in last night wasn't very friendly. <laughs> the hotel was empty. We said, can we stay one more night? They're like, no, we're full. But we've, uh, we've checked in with the Mexican family in their little Airbnb type thing. And now I'm not just... quite sure where we're staying inside. Yeah. I thought you said police. What, you got police in the cooler? I thought you said take a picture of my cooler. I did not stop feeling sick. Because the glass of water at the guest house, it tasted meaty, didn't it? No, I, I just wasn't it's sure really it was tap water. Tasty it's water. You've got to be careful. Yeah. We're just exploring Palenque. It's quite nice. It's um, certainly nicer than Escar Gaceza, that's for sure. That place was nasty. I just got the main compliment then. The Emperor says, I really appreciate you speaking Thai in Thailand because here we feel like total gringos. Apart from unos, dos, tres, por favor, muchas gracias, and si, I don't speak any Spanish whatsoever. Um, and most people here don't speak any English whatsoever. So, you know, we're using Google Translate and stuff like that, but it really, really makes a difference. It really does make a difference to the way you get treated, um, your overall experience. So yeah, we've got to learn some Spanish from when we come back. What I really like about this place is if you see in the background, we've got some mountains. We're starting to get a little bit of up and down here rather than being totally flat. And I do like to be up in the mountains. You know, we're surrounded here by a mountain range. Palenque, palenque. So, we just came over to like the shady part of the street. We've just been walking in the sunny part like dickheads. Absolutely baking. Hey, we're just exploring. Okay, go we're waiting for the sun. We're going to go to El Pachan when the sun goes down a little yes, bit. It's too hot for us gringos around here. Okay, you take care of yourself, yeah? Survive the apocalypse. Yes. apocalypse. The greatest yes. apocalypse ever. <laughs> There's this couple that we met in the coffee shop. The ladies from Michigan. And Detroit. Did, no, Detroit. Yeah, Detroit is in Michigan, oh, isn't it? Yeah. Michigan is in Detroit. Yeah. Um, the, her husband, I thought he was black too, but he's actually Mexican. He's dressed like an absolute gangster. They started chatting to us and uh, they said, how did you get here without your vaccination? I said, listen, we haven't got none of that. We, I said, COVID is bullshit. And this woman proceeded to tell me how it was the greatest apocalypse ever. She's saying that the God of Israel told her she was going to be a prophet in 2019. This is God's reckoning. And I'm saying, okay. It was quite an interesting conversation over espresso this morning anyway, I'll let you know that. Oh, I, we... I said to her, she said, it's the apocalypse. This is the God of Israel wiping out the heathens. I said, I don't know about that. But I said, do you think it's the mark of the beast? She said, yeah. And her husband goes, it's the vaccination internal digital ID, man. So they knew their shit. They're a little bit, a little bit God of Israel extremist about it. But uh, it was an interesting exchange, to say the least. The woman had even written a book about the apocalypse. She said she wrote it in 2019, I'm not so sure. It had COVID-19 on the front of it. It's touring the streets of Palenque. Palenque. Palenque, Palenque. What do you got for me, Palenque? I don't want any more tortillas. No more tortillas. <laughs> no, more, taste, no more tacos. They taste like a fart in my mouth. They taste like a fart in your mouth? Yeah. I think it's that cuck. You've been face farting no, in your own cuck. It's the aftertaste of the tortillas. It just reminds me of the, the brown bean juice. Oh, yeah. That with their tortillas here, they have this brown paste. It looks exactly like diarrhea. I think it's bean paste mixed with chocolate. But it, look, it looks disgusting and it doesn't taste very good either. And they serve it with everything. Let's take a little siesta. Whatever he had, he was offering it to everyone. Man, he's up, 
Oh, oh, it's always the collectivo man. They're the, the loud shouters. <laughs> wow, look at that cowboy shop. <coughs> Hotter than the sun here. Supposed to be the hottest place I've ever been. Sweat is pouring off my face, my sunglasses are sliding off my face. Okay, we're in Palenque and once again it's taco time. This, this one is called El Sirloin. It looks like a doner kebab, but it's actually beef sirloin with onions, coriander. And when we build, build the tacos, it's all about getting this one here. A little bit of lorium. It's very important. We'll get some of this one. Super good. And here is where we're staying now in Palenque. Are you going to put in Google Translate? Oh shit. It's called Bimbo Oasis. I think we're just staying in that room, baby. Okay. Oh, So we were recommended this place called El Pacham, which is near to the ruins. We thought for once we're not going to sweat it out in the like the, the hardcore heat of the day. We'll come at like three, four o'clock. That's a different restaurant, yeah. So the taxi driver drops off at El Pacham, which is this place here. Oh, apparently jung Jungler Palace. But <laughs> the ruins is another three kilometers and it shuts in 10 minutes. So we, we missed that one today, but we're just walking through this lovely jungle enclosure are. which i'm not quite sure how you can just close off a jungle at four o'clock and no the ruins were closed at four o'clock yeah i know but they're like they're not actually corned at all so i'm pretty sure like if you wanted to in the middle of the night you can walk there <laughs> prohibitor i know that's what I'm facing. Oh. <laughs> I mean, do not stupid gringo we don't really know what we're doing or no, looking for or even what this is like this I feel like these are like buildings that you stay in. I think that maybe they are. Okay, well, well hey, we're just killing time, aren't we? I don't know. Where are you going? I'm going up here. She'd have wandering off in a random direction. Where are you going, Michael? I thought the sign said Libertad. Well, I'll go this way. <laughs> I feel like I'm playing Far Cry 6. Maybe we can just stop by and say hello. So where are you going? What are you doing? I don't know. We're just here. We've come all this way. We've come all this way. We're gonna come see the jungle, Michael. It's pretty cool. This is the densest, tallest jungle we've been in so far, don't you reckon? Like, if you <coughs> compare this to uh, uh, Puerto Morales, here you've actually got, it looks more like a jungle, don't you reckon, rather than just a forest. <coughs> I know who's the king of the jungle when it comes to who's got the strongest joint. It's double L skin. So each of these little places, I think people are just staying here. Some camping. Cool. It is quite cool. I mean, I'm not saying it's the the height of luxury. Check this out. It's just a shack. <coughs> Old and ancient. Ancient. Tasmanian. We're we exploring. This is what adventuring is all about. Oh, 
fancy a quick feather skull ceremony. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't beat the one we already did. It, that was that was really good. Real life? Hey. Real life. <laughs> yeah, he's like real life. Yeah. <laughs> this is not the this is not the metaverse. This is real life. Or maybe he's taking the piss out of me because I'm walking around talking to a GoPro. I don't know. No, he looked. <coughs> he looked back to be on it. <coughs> <coughs> Obviously, he wanted to appear on Rise Above. He knows. He knows the score. What's this? Body modification. Hand poking tribal. Body piercing. Hand poking. To be honest, I didn't feel like getting ancient poking in the jungle. But you know, we're just hand having <laughs> hand ancient hand poking in the jungle. I kind of feel ready now for pasta carbonara. Yeah, we were just building up our appetite for uh, Don Muncho's pasta carbonara, served jungle style. Empress Megan and we just took a turn to the Z Jungle Palace, and we had the first offer of magic mushrooms. Just some little dude stood there giggling, going, "Mushroom, mushroom." <laughs> we don't have any right now, we want to eat. So she tried to order garlic bread and it said bread with garlic butter. And what did you get? You get a piece of buttered bread. Toast. Is it toast? Oh, toast. oh, a piece of toast. Has it got garlic butter on it? Just regular butter? Garlic butter. <laughs> toast with garlic butter? Go to garlic bread. <laughs> <laughs> the, the little man in his mushroom offer is, is seeing him more tempting as this food is coming out. Do you want a piece of toast and some salad with your spaghetti? <laughs> it's reminiscent of the, uh, the, the vegetarian sandwich in Tulum. I don't know if we told you about that. <laughs> it was legendary. What was in the vegetarian sandwich? Uh, it was courgette diced with skin and carrot diced with skin, but not small dices, like was quite it, chunky. Was it cooked? Uh, the, the bread was warm, um, but still soft, so it really, you could hold sides when the, the filling was, it was like, like a flat Cornish pasty. Um, and it just had butter, hot vegetables, and warm bread, and um, a few French fries, and then a few slices of cucumber. As a cross on the it was it was a, a sight to behold ladies and gents mm -hmm. this, this your hat is like a mushroom i'm a fortune teller yeah. i can tell you what's your mission in life are you okay to be on my youtube vlog uh, what's your name dude fiel tulum nice to meet you Nice to meet you too. So I'll tell you what's your mission in life based on the Mayan calendar. Okay. Then you have to give me a tip. Okay. What's no, your date? Yeah, what's no your problem. No problem. I'm date of birth. My date of birth is the 2nd of August, 1983. You are the spectral dragon. The dragon is the source of life. It symbolizes to give life and support life. To feed, help, protect, support and heal. They're very sensitive. Yes. But your dark side is to be too sensitive and exaggerate your perceptions. Yes. This can bring you to an excess of romanticism or to repress your emotions. And spectral symbolizes freedom, to break the chains. Yes. You should stay away from stress and do everything that can relax you. Okay. That's good for you. You have the power to dissolve. Okay. Your action is to free. Yeah. And your mission in life is the mission of the monkey. To play with magic and illusion. To laugh about yourself. To have many different personalities. And live life as a game. As a holy game. And you are red. This means you have a lot of knowledge, but also too much ignorance. Those are your extremes. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's true. Like, oh, oh. And your highest vibration point is at the sunrise in the morning. 
Okay, that's when the energy is in your favor. Spectral Dragon. Whoa. Wow, that was amazing. You definitely deserve a tip for that. Hold the camera. Yeah, sure. What's your name? Uh, the 11th of February, 1990. You are the lunar seed. The seed symbolizes projects, wisdom, and maturity. Mm -hmm. To find the fertile land where the consciousness can flower and you can plant the seed of a project. They're very sexual because it's oh, yeah. connected to the ground. And lunar means to be crazy, to go to the extremes. Sometimes you're something, but sometimes you're the opposite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. So everything is a challenge for you and you are your own obstacle. Mm -hmm. You also push other people to their extremes. You have the power <laughs> to polarize. Wow. <laughs> and your mission in life is the mission of the night. To attract abundance so you can share. And you are yellow. Sometimes a queen, sometimes a slave. Those are your extremes. Wow. Oh and your God. highest vibration point is at noon. That's when the energy is in your favor. And you're in a green square. So you have a very intense karma. When you have good times, they're very good. When you have bad times, they're very bad. It's extreme. Oh my gosh. Lunar seed. Wow. And I'm gonna tell you what you're together. So it's simple. It's cosmic serpent. The serpent symbolizes the connection between the material world and the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. It's Tantra. It's the spiritualization of pleasure. It's how you can use your body as a spiritual tool to achieve higher states of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So this is your essence uh, together. And your mission together is the mission of the Skywalker. To travel, to explore, to take the risk, to get out of the routine mm -hmm. and experiment. I love this guy. This guy, you're this the, guy you are. Amazing. This guy has actually made me well up. This guy's the number one fortune teller in the crater cry. realm. Hold the camera. I've got to give you a big tip, dude. Holy <gasps> shit. I need it. I have to go to, all the way to Tulum. And I came here with my car almost out of gas. <laughs> and I didn't even know if I was, was going to make it to Palenque. It was super crazy. Is 160 Thank okay? You, Thank you, man. F. F. I. E. E. L. L to to loom. Like this? Yeah. yeah okay. Fiel to loom. As soon as I can get some signal, I'm going to tag you up. Pick up bro. yourself. Thank you. Bye. Wow. Holy shit. We just come across this mad dude dressed like a mushroom. He's like, he I'm going to tell you. He basically told us the entire thing we were just We were just having this mad emotional conversation in the bar about the Matrix, the Matrix 4. We're going to watch later on. Oh God, Our personal to, spiritual journeys. And. We're like, right, let's go to the next place. We, we, we were having a little teary moment, having this deep conversation. And this dude turned up out of nowhere. And he's Never like, I'm going to tell your fortune. Leopard print dress he <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was selling magic mushrooms. I was like, dude, you got any mushrooms? Whoa, that was, Whoa. that was intense. I can't believe that. The mushroom prophet, he just appeared out of nowhere. We're like, where did he come from? He just appeared out of nowhere. And he knew everything about me. And Evelyn, he knew everything about us. Uh, that description was so spot on, it was actually scary. And all he had was just a little chart. I thought he was getting you, and I thought, this is what I do. I blanked myself up, and I thought, he'll never get me. And he had a Jewish star around his neck. He was a Jew as well, just so you he's know. Both, he's priest class. <laughs> it's still the occult. The occult is the occult, it's your intention behind it. Maybe he was, maybe he just realises the power of the Solomon star and that's why he has it. Oh, listen, if he was a, a, a sentient being like us, he's a very special character. But if he was an NPC in this simulation, we just came across some like secret bonus character that not many people come across. That dude's different.